Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and this video is going to be a second part in which I am discussing the role and function of the DSCAM gene. I highly recommend you to watch my first video. And once again here is the problem. The gene with the greatest known number of alternatively spliced mRNAs is a Drosophila fruit fly gene called DSCAM and all of its um, mature message RNAs contains 24 exons. However, as this figure shows, there are mutually exclusive choices for exons 4, 6, 9 and 17. Assuming all possible combinations are used, how many different message RNAs can be um, can this gene DSCAM produce. And in my previous video I show you simple calculations that uh, those we have here 24 um, exons but exon number 4, 6, 9 and 17 has uh, many uh, variations and only one out of this uh, variance would be uh, found in the uh, messenger RNA. For example for exon number 4 as you see 12 uh, variants exist. So one of this variant only can be found uh, in the messenger RNA. And for exon number 6, 48 variants exist. So in order to find total number of combinations, we just have to multiply all these numbers. 12 we have to multiply by 48 and multiply by 33 and multiply by 2. And we are going to get 38,016 different variants of the messenger RNA and that also means uh, variants of the proteins. And this is surface protein that can be found on the surface of the cells but in some literature you may find information that number of the variants is um, 19,008 and as you see this is exactly have the number of uh, 38,016. Uh, why? Because uh, some uh, scientists calculate only uh, first three domains. So 12, 48 and 33 variants we can find here and omit the last one where we have uh, two variants. So in this video I'm going to explain different approaches, why some scientists uh, calculate this number and why others calculate this number. So imagine that uh, we have uh, a cell here and this is cell membrane, here is uh, another cell and this is also cell membrane and cell membrane is made of molecules with hydrophilic heads and so hydrophilic hands and inside uh, these molecules have a hydrophobic tails. So inside of this double lipid layer is hydrophobic. As you know, some of the amino acids may have a charge, can be positively charged, uh, can be negatively charged, or may not have any charge at all. So that also means that uh, they may be uh, hydrophilic or hydrophobic. And it's turned out that uh, exon number 17 would make two variants of the um, protein or part of this uh, protein that is going to be hydrophobic and we can find it as uh, transmembrane in these parts of the cell. So it's going to be uh, basically inside the cell and uh, wouldn't uh, be found outside of the cell. And the rest, uh, exon number 9 for example, can be found outside, so can be found here. Exon number 6 also can be found uh, outside and exon number 4 
So these parts uh, of the uh, protein that is caught by messenger RNA and this is going to be beginning of the messenger RNA so uh, and terminus uh, going to be here and of course if other cell would also produce the same type of um, extracellular proteins such proteins would make a homodimer and would adhere to each other and that means that cells would also adhere to each other once again the name of this gene is DSCAM down syndrome cell adhesive molecule uh, why uh, it is called down syndrome uh, those uh, our example is about um, gene that is found in the uh, fruit fly because uh, homologous gene have been found first in um, human chromosome 21 and as you know extra 21 chromosome cause down syndrome and it's turned it out that uh, insects also have this uh, homologous chromosome but unlike human chromosome uh, this gene in insects produce great variety of the surface uh, proteins uh, as you see a number of uh, variation exceeds number of the genes in the fruit fly in the fruit fly there are about 15,000 of genes but as you see number of uh, proteins that can be produced by only this one gene would be 38,000 but as I explained, uh, some scientists would only count 19,000 because uh, only about 90,000 variation of this protein would participate in cellular recognition and uh, in some cases this would lead that uh, cells would adhere to each other but in other cases, uh, like with example with nerve cell which is very different from any other cells in our organism uh, which can uh, produce such structures like this it is needed for self-recognition and self-avoidance so branches uh, of the same cell wouldn't attach to other branches of the same cell and my last note would be for example uh, let's uh, return to our gene Exon number 9 has 33 variants. Once again, these variants are mutually exclusive, so only one uh, would be found in the uh, messenger RNA. So let's say that uh, here we would uh, see uh, exon number 2, and here we would see from this cassette number 3, and uh, from this cassette we would see number 5. So this is going to be a unique combination here and for strong adherence of these two cells uh, combinations of this cell also have to be the same 2, 3 and 5 and even if uh, one of these three uh, domains would have different uh, homolog of this sequence this is not totally different sequence uh, sequence are uh, homologous uh, just have a slight different uh, variants of the amino acids that can be found here so even if one domain uh, would have different variant of the exon then this extracellular uh, proteins wouldn't make a homodimer but in some cases uh, even if some of these uh, domains would be different from the rest for example here would be domain number three still such a protein can make uh, one uh, heteroprotein in this case this is going to be not homodimer but heterodimer protein and this area is not very well researched yet because uh, 
just think about it that, for example, this cell may have uh, 19,008 variants of this surface protein, and this cell also may have 19,008 variants of this surface protein. So the total number of possible interaction would be 19,008 multiplied by 19,008. This is how many uh, different uh, variants exist, but uh, number of uh, heterodimers is so great that um, scientists just don't know which of the heterodimers uh, would also uh, adhere to each other, because number of combinations is very great. So if we multiply these numbers, we are going to get about uh, 3.6 millions. And even if we would divide by two, because the number of unique combinations would be a half, so about uh, uh, 1.8 million combinations. As you see, this is very elaborate task to find uh, all these uh, combinations and uh, find out uh, which heterodimers would be stable. So scientists would say that uh, total number of protein uh, surface proteins possible is about 19,000, but uh, probably we would have a much uh, greater uh, variance of the interactions, and some of them uh, would make stable heterodimers. But exact number is not known yet. But as a rule of thumb, we assume that these receptors for two different cells have to be exactly the same for the strong adherence. So these two cells uh, would recognize that uh, these cells would belong to the same tissues. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.